Hi, today we're going to be doing our postcard number three and then I'm going to be showing you my extended Meaden drawers and I also have another brand that are very similar. I think they've really, really grown. But anyways, let's start off with our landscape painting for today. And this is the reference photo. It's by Harry B and it's from Unsplash. So that is what we are going to be doing. I'm going to move that just out of the way. We've got our little postcard here. Same as before, we're using the Frisk Cotton Watercolour Postcards A6 300 GSM Cold Pressed. So that's what we are using. I've got some brushes at the ready. They're all round brushes and one um, rigger, so it's naught. So I've got a size 4, a size 8 and a size 12 round. And I'm also going to be using this Platinum Carbon um, fountain pen. And that's got um, ink that is waterproof in it. So let's begin by making a horizon line. And this one's going to be a little bit kind of ink and wash, I guess. So I'm going just, not halfway up, um, just under that. So there is slightly more above than below, but um, not by much. And then we are going to start by putting our sky in. I am going to be using my Michael Harding paints. So we're going to start with a size 8. And for the sky today, I this one looks... Let's use Vivid Blue. I think that's quite a good match for what's on the photo. So I'm not worried about my trees at the minute. I just want to get a little sky in. we want some bits that are a little bit darker up here coming across and leave some elements that look a bit like clouds we've got trees at the bottom here so it doesn't really matter however we will need this to dry before well actually we could do the green because it won't matter if that rides up a bit. Let's do our, so we've got a sky in. We're now going to do this um, green background. And I think I'm going to use, what should we use? Moss green. Let's use moss green to get this. Green bit in. I don't want it to be completely even. Um, so you can see that some bits are darker than others, but that's fine. So um, we're going to leave that to dry and I'll be back in a tick. Okay, that is all dry. So I'm going to get the trees in next this tree line here and we've got some that are lower down we've got these big conifer type trees pointing up we've got a couple of ones that stick out a little bit so we'll do something similar it doesn't have to be exactly the same we will get our trees in and I think we're I'm going to be using a real mixture I'm going to use Moss green, olive green, perylene green and bright green. I, I might mix all of those um, together with whatever is left on my palette from before. 
so um, it's just so that we get a, a nice mixture of greens going on here so let's see if we can get some of these bushes in and then the trees in the background so let's just change our green a little bit And then I think those big trees, we will go more periline green for those ones that are in the, that are coming up here. Can add a little bit more interest in here as well, can't we? Just to a bit of wet in wet, just to. And then I just want to bring that across and just let that merge a little bit there. Okay, so I think we've got some some trees going on in the background there. The ones that are sticking out, I'm going to go to my rigger and just get that in there. It's just kind of sticking out there, like so. And we've got one over here as well that's doing the same. There we go, we just pop that in there like so, just to give an impression of those trees there in the background. Right, that's kind of running down now, so I'm going to help it a bit more, blend it in a bit more. Okay. Now I need that to dry for us to be able to start to play with this front piece here. And we are back. We will put a bit more detail in those trees um, later. We'll see what we need to do. But next we're going to be doing the um, little poppies, I think they are. And I'm just going to do them like lips. So um, I'll bring the one up a bit closer that I did before and you will see they're a kind of a, a lip shape and then some of them are really just little tiny dotted ovals. I hope you can, hope you can see that, but that's what we're going to be doing down here. So I'm just going to put these little... lip shape and they don't need to be exact some of them are just ovals and then some of them aren't even anything much as we get up to the top here it's more it's more like dots because obviously they're going to be getting smaller as we go further away. Then we'll get some of these dots in. some that are slightly bigger and then I'm, I'm almost just doing kind of little oh, what do you call them semicircles kind of thing as well just to because we've got a whole field of these and then I'm just going to do some stalks they don't necessarily even have to 
fit with the with the marks that we've made. We just want to give an idea that we have got these stalks poking up here and there. So we're just going to be doing it. I think we probably need a few more there. So there we go. I hope you can, might be able to come down a little bit actually. Yeah, maybe you can kind of see what I've done there now a bit better. Like so. Let's just get you back in place. There we are. So we've got those in. And we can now add some of the red. I'm going to be using Scarlet Lake. Or shall I use Quin Coral? Mm, Scarlet Lake. Let's use Scarlet Lake. And we're literally just going to dot. We don't need to even, we're not filling in the, the shapes as such, we're just dotting. And then as we get up here, we're just going to make even finer dots, little tiny dots. So that we give the impression of these poppies that are even further away. There we go. So we've got our poppies there. Now I think, oh I was using, what was I using? Size 4, apologies everybody, size 4. Now I want to get a little bit more um, definition in here. So I'm going to see if I can just add some more some light bits into the dark. Just so is that, and I might just blend some of that a bit more, just so that it doesn't look, or so that it looks like it's a bit more 3D. There, I think that's looking a a little bit better. We'll get something a bit more in the front there. There, I think that looks a lot better. Really simple this one. That is it, basically. Um, the one I did ta-da earlier, <laughs> um, I didn't wait for the sky to dry and I actually used my pen to do the trees and I didn't like it. I liked this part, but I didn't like this part. So um, I'm much preferring this one here, which I think looks a lot better. So let's just take our tape, masking tape off. That's kind of ripped a bit, but that's okay.
there we go there is our finished little landscape there's our reference picture and there's our little landscape so I'm really quite pleased with how that one's come out there we go landscape picture number what are we on five or is it four um I think we're on number <laughs> that was one that was two that was three that was four yeah number five this is our landscape postcard number five and um what I'm going to do next is just show you what I've been doing with my extra drawers that I have so back in a tick okay so you can see this is one set of drawers the top ones here are the Meaden and then these ones uh, the three at the bottom were a set that came from Ken Bromley Arts I will put links to both for you but you can see I've popped some little things on the top there and I will show you what's inside uh, this one so we'll go from bottom to top so this drawer has got all my Molito markers Oops. this drawer has got some of my what are these Faber Castell Pit Artist pens? And then there's more in this drawer here. So I can easily find those now. This drawer has got some. What are these? Eco Line. A couple of chunky permanent markers, some pencils couple of highlighters and that's a little pencil sharpener that goes on the end of a pencil that's what we have in that drawer moving on up as they say I have my museum aquarelle in these two drawers and then in then in these two sections I have got my graffiti tints those are graffiti tints across there and then I've just got some spare little water brush bits in there. Moving on up in this next drawer, I've got all of my Derwent ink tents. And that says I know what colours I've got. In the next one, we have got the Derwent drawing pencils. And then I have got lots of water brushes. So that's what's in that one. In the next one, I've got some pen, different types of pens, really, and some fountain pens as well. Uh, I think there is a mechanical pencil in there as well and some spare um, leads. And then in the top one, I've got, these are erasers, um, what else have we got in there, oh that's my Blackwing spare erasers, uh, oh yes we've got this Koinora Versatile and all the different leads that go with it, uh, we've got some more chunky charcoals, and then we've got these water soluble um, chunky graphite sticks so that is what is in that one Oops. and then over here next to it we have exactly the same so I think I showed you my six drawers but we've got the three at the bottom here so let's have a sneak peek shall we it's always nice to know what's in other people's so here you can see i've got some 
travel brushes, uh, letter opener, little um, palette knife. I've got more pencil type things and, and leads and um, things like that really. Wax crayons, that's what's in that one. In this one I've got gold and silver pens of all different makes and then I've got um, some fine liners, lots of different fine liners. In this one we've got some Faber-Castell uh, sketch markers, those are called. I've got some white gel pens and acrylic markers, that kind of thing. And then I've got some of these um, Zig Clean Colour Dots, so they're in there. And then I've got, these are a mixture. So I have the luminance, but I've also got in here, what else have I got? So the next drawers will all be the same. Um, Albrecht Jura, Faber-Castell. Oh, that's a watercolour. Okay. So I've got a mixture of watercolour and normal um, pencils and they are all different makes so there will also be um, what have we got in here we've got Derwent Light Fast we've got um, Polychromos we've got Holbein I think that's Polychromos another Polychromos um, but anyway as you will see there is a real mixture yeah so this is a Faber-Castell polychromos as well okay so yes these are all the browns going all the way across and we've got all the blues a real mixture of different um, makes basically but I just thought it would be easier to have them done by colour rather than make so um and even more don't they just look luscious and finally we've got greens lots of greens so there we go i've got my brushes that i use the most in this holder here which has got really nice pictures on it, but I got that from eBay. Um, pop that back, and then I've got a few more brushes and scissors and craft knives, and you've seen those things before, I think. Anyway, uh, but there we go. So I think that that has really tidied up that end of my desk. Uh-oh, <laughs> we still have this end to try and sort out and come up with a better storage solution, really. So, um, yes, anybody that knows a better way of storing some of this, I've got all sorts of things in here. Um, but they're things that I reach for all the time. I've got a few things on the top of this. Um, set of three drawers, some sketchbooks and paper. But yeah, this end of the desk still looks a trifle messy. So, there we go everyone. If I thought that I could use those drawers for the things on the other end, I would, but I, they're not going to fit. I need something slightly different, I think, for that end. So let me know um, what you think. And uh, I hope you enjoy doing this little postcard here. And I will see you again next time. Bye for now.